In today's lesson, we're going to talk about reverb, and you're going to want to stay until the end because I've added some additional slides that are not currently on Canvas. Reverb is the result of many reflections of sound in a room. The sound wave takes a direct path that reaches our ears. The sound wave can also take a slightly longer path by reflecting off of the walls, ceiling, the floor, and or other surfaces in the room. So as we can see from the diagram, the sound emanating directly from the sound source and reaching the listener's ears without reflection is known as direct sound. The other paths are reflected. So if we consider the right side of the diagram, the sound reflects off of the wall and then to the listening position. Then if we look at the left side of the diagram, the sound reflects off the side wall, the back wall, and then reaches the listening position. These reflections take a longer time to reach the listening position than the direct sound, but they all intermix with the direct sound, reinforcing it. Unless, that is, the reflections have a lot of intensity. If they have too much intensity, they can make the direct sound less clear. Reverb in a DAW is a simulation of space, for example, a room or a concert hall. It is because of the spatial quality of reverb that it is typically used in stereo, which is why many reverb plugins have a mono in, stereo out option for adding reverb to a mono signal. So if you think about it, let's say you're in a concert hall and you're listening to a guitar. You'll not only hear the direct sound of the guitar, you'll hear reflections in the space with two ears. Thus, you'll be hearing the soundscape in stereo. That is why reverb plugins have a mono in stereo out option. Another good way to think about reverb is sound radiates from a sound source in waves, much like ripples that are created when you throw a stone into a pool of water. Those radiating waves eventually hit multiple surfaces, like walls, the ceiling, the floor, or anything else that might be in the space. And the reflections mix with the original sound. So if we remember from the previous slide, we get the direct sound from the sound source to the listening position without reflection. But then we hear a slight time later reflections off of the walls, and those intermix with the direct sound. The way we hear sound depends on several factors, primarily how far away various reflective surfaces are and what they're made out of. In most cases, what we hear is the end product of thousands of echoes reflected many times. And again, the sound source, what we hear is the direct sound plus its reflections because we're always listening to both because there is no natural space where reflections aren't present. The only thing that comes close is a man-made room called an anechoic chamber, and even that has limits. So we are always listening to the direct sound of the sound source plus its reflections. Early and late reflections, the echo components of reverb. Early reflections or early sound or early echoes are heard first after the impulse of the direct sound. The rate of reflections increases with the late reflections. Late reflections are also known as reverb tail or sometimes simply reverb. Also, if you're looking at a reverb unit or plugin, you might also see RT sub 60. This stands for reverb time and the sub 60 stands for the time it takes for the reverb to decay 60 dB. In this diagram, we see the impulse of the sound, followed by the early reflections, which generally contain one or two distinct reflections or echoes, and this is followed by late reflections, or the reverberant sound, which are random, multiply spaced echoes that are indistinguishable from each other. All of these echoes are simulating the sound bouncing off of surfaces of the space. 
It is very important to keep in mind that the surfaces themselves will have an effect on the echoed sound. Surfaces can behave as acoustical reflectors, absorbers, or even filters. This is what gives a particular space its sonic character. So say, for instance, if we're in a room that is made up of all tile, we would expect a brighter sound than a room made up of completely wood, which we would expect a warmer sound. Also, the surfaces of the room determine how much energy is lost with each reflection. Highly reflected materials such as concrete or tile will increase the overall reverb time. Absorptive materials such as curtains, couches, heavy carpet, and people reduce the reverb time. And the amount of absorption can vary with frequency. Some surfaces only absorb high frequencies, for example. And in fact, it's not uncommon to lose both high and low frequency as the reverb decays because those frequencies are often lost. Pre-delay is the amount of time between the initial sound and the first echo we hear, called early reflections. Adjusting the pre-delayed parameter changes how big the space feels. The length of time it takes for all echoes to fade away, decay time, also known as reverb time, determines the reflectiveness of the space. But the way the decay time interacts with the early reflections makes a difference too. For example, a small but reflective room, say a tiled bathroom, can have a decay time similar to that of a concert hall. But the smaller room's early reflections will arrive much sooner than the big hall and we will sense a smaller space. So the pre-delay adjustment is determines the time between the impulse of the sound, the direct sound, and the time it takes for the first reflection to be heard. By increasing that pre-delay parameter, we make the space sound bigger. Common parameters of reverb. Wet dry mix. The relationship between the original dry and the reverberant wet sound. This is an oral cue of our proximity to the original source. So more wet means we're farther from the source. And this is a very useful parameter if we're using the reverb as an insert. So let's say we're putting reverb as an insert on a guitar track. Wet dry mix will allow us to balance the direct sound of the guitar versus the wet sound or the reverberant sound of the processor. This is a little different if we use reverb as a send and return model. If we use a send and return model, we would send the guitar on a bus to an aux channel with the reverb opened as a plugin. The wet dry mix is determined by the level of the aux fader. Generally, we'll leave the wet dry mix in the plugin itself all the way to 100%. Pre-delay, as we had just mentioned, is the amount of time before the first reflections of the signal are heard. This is the primary parameter that determines the size of the space. Decay time or reverb time indicates how long the reverb can be heard after the input stops. This is measured in milliseconds, but it also can be measured in seconds. Say concert halls are generally measured in seconds. So if we consider orchestra hall where the Chicago Symphony Orchestra plays, that reverb time is 1.2 seconds. If we think about Royal Albert Hall, that reverb time is three and a half seconds. And it's even longer for cathedrals, which can be in excess of four or five seconds. Diffusion refers to uneven surfaces that cause the reflections to bounce in different directions. So if we have parallel surfaces, you might expect a slap echo. If the surfaces are irregular in shape, that tends to break up those standing waves that produce the slap echo and make a more natural sound. So increasing diffusion pushes the early reflections closer together, which thicken the sound. Reducing diffusion produces a sound with more discrete echoes, i.e. that slap. Damping sound waves will lose high frequencies as they bounce around softer surfaces, producing a warmer and darker sound. 
High and low frequency attenuation will restrict frequencies from entering or exiting the reverb unit. And this happens naturally in reverberant spaces that we will indeed lose some of the high and the low frequency content. So before we talk about the parameters of plug-in reverbs and demonstrate plug-in reverbs, I wanted to show you some actual spaces. This is WFMT's Levin Recording Studio. It is categorized as a room. And if we look at the surfaces of this room, we see a wooden floor, drywall, um, with some acoustical treatment on the upper parts of the wall. By just looking at this, we might determine that this room is a bit lively. This studio is Namush in Lisbon, Portugal, which I had the pleasure of visiting this summer. It is a much bigger room than WFMT, so it has a much more volume. However, it is more dry than WFMT because of the dampening surfaces on the wall. So this room has a lot of volume, but very little reverb time. This is Preston Bradley Hall at the Chicago Cultural Center. This would be categorized as a medium hall. It seats about 500 people. And as you can see, there are a lot of reflective surfaces with the marble in the space. Um, this picture was taken during sound check, and not many people are in the room. So when the hall is full, 500 people, the sound gets a little drier because people make really, really good absorbers. And this is Orchestra Hall, where the Chicago Symphony Orchestra plays. This would be categorized as a large hall. As I was saying earlier, its reverb time is 1.2 seconds. However, that's a fairly short reverb time for a concert hall because orchestral members don't have reinforcement to hear each other play. They're actually listening to the reverberation in the room to hear each other and to balance each other. This hall is relatively short for a large concert hall. This space is a church. It's Fourth Presbyterian Church in downtown Chicago. And it has a lot of space and a reverb time, I would say approximately four and a half seconds. Now we can't always record in these types of reverberant spaces, so we can add reverb. Nowadays we can use plugins, but before the advent of digital reverb, we actually had to use some other methods to create reverb. This type of reverb is a chamber. So if we wanted reverb before digital reverb and we couldn't record in an actual space, a studio might dedicate a room and put reflective surfaces around it and use it as a chamber reverb. So what happens here is sound is sent on a bus from the console into this chamber where it bounces around the chamber and is picked up by two microphones and returned back into the console. This is a very wonderful sounding type of reverb. However, it requires a fair amount of real estate in your studio, like an entire room, or in our case at Audio Arts and Acoustics, an actual full vault. If a studio couldn't dedicate this amount of space for reverb, they might get this option. This is a plate reverb um, made famous by EMT. So basically, this is a wooden box with a metal plate suspended in it. Again, we send the reverb from the console into the plate and it vibrates the metal. It is then picked up by microphones and returned back to the console. This is a classic reverb for things like vocals and snare hits. An even smaller type of mechanical reverb is the spring reverb. You can see the springs in this unit and sound is sent to the springs. The springs vibrate 
and then it is returned back to the direct sound. This is a type of reverb that is often found in guitar cabinets. And this is what we had to do. This was all mechanical reverb before the advent of digital reverb. The first digital reverb appeared in 1976, and it was made by EMT, the same manufacturers of the plate reverb. This particular reverb was called an EMT-250, the first digital reverb, and it weighed 600 pounds. A short time later, a company called Lexicon made the 224 digital reverb in 1978. This was followed by the 480L, also by Lexicon, which was made in 1986. Even today, this is a very sought-after reverb. Up until 1999, digital reverb was based on algorithms. That was until Sony released the DRES-777 in 1999. This is the first convolution reverb, which actually models actual spaces. Even though standalone reverbs can be desirable, they are not 100% necessary because plugins can provide very high quality reverb. For example, this is Dverb, a stock plugin which comes with Pro Tools. And here we see various options. So we can have it simulate a hall, a church, a plate, a room, or various ambient spaces. We can adjust them to small, medium, or large. And we can also go in and fine adjust by working on the pre-delay, the decay, the high filter cut, the low pass filter, diffusion, plus we can adjust the wet dry mix. The next video will be a demonstration of reverb.